Hi everyone. How's it going today? I hope you're all doing well and feeling good. It's always a pleasure to have you with me on my channel. As usual, I will discuss some topics that you might like. I understand that the quality of this video might not be the best, but I hope that the content is still understandable and informative. If you're interested in learning more, I also have a Telegram channel where I share various information that I can't post here. And make sure to subscribe to my backup YouTube channel in case of unforeseen events. So, without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. The mystery of the winged tiny human skeletons found in the basement of an old London house has caused quite a stir. According to reports, the remains of fairies, werewolves, and alien-like creature were discovered during a house clearance of a mansion that belonged to a mysterious collector from the 19th century. The collection consists of skeletal winged bodies of fairies, werewolves, and alien-like creature, all preserved in cases and jars, striking gruesome poses. The fairies, with their flesh decayed and wings nailed to display boards, are accompanied by eerie human-like bodies and hairy humanoid remains. The collection doesn't stop there. It also contains sketches of Jack the Ripper victims, Catherine Eddowes and Elizabeth Stride, along with alleged human hearts and other organs, preserved in jars. This macabre assortment is said to have been amassed by a wealthy aristocrat and biologist named Thomas Theodore Marilyn in the 1800s. A blog post detailing the discovery suggests that the mansion, which had been abandoned for a long time, was slated for demolition in the 1960s during the construction of a new residential neighborhood. Builders were taken aback when they stumbled upon thousands of tightly sealed small wooden boxes in the basement, each containing the bodies of these strange mythical creatures that had hitherto existed only in fairy tales. The intriguing artifacts were brought to light by artist Alex C.F., who claims that Marilyn's diaries contain references to advanced ideas that were unheard of during his time. Allegedly, these diaries also provide scientific explanations for many of the peculiar specimens found in his collection. It's a chilling tale that certainly piques one's curiosity. What do you think? Before I continue the video, please give a like if you learned something. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell, so you won't miss any update. Finally, watch until the end to avoid any misunderstanding. Thank you. In a bombshell revelation, John Homiston, a retired CIA agent, spilled the beans on a captivating conspiracy that rocked the music industry. According to Homiston, hip-hop, the cultural juggernaut that took the world by storm, was no mere happenstance or organic movement. Instead, he claims it was a calculated psychological operation concocted and orchestrated by none other than the Central Intelligence Agency itself in the 1980s. This audacious assertion left many dumbfounded, as hip-hop had grown to become one of the most influential and globally recognized music genres. But, as Homiston explained, the government had seen the immense power that music wielded over the hearts and minds of young people, and realized that they could leverage it as a potent propaganda tool. The CIA's involvement extended beyond just financing famous artists, like N.W.A., Dr. Dre, Jay-Z, and Kanye West. They actively shaped the direction of their music, injecting subtle messages and narratives to serve their covert agenda. In some cases, famous songs by iconic bands like N.W.A. were even penned by a team of military propagandists and CIA psychologists, strategically designed to appeal to the masses while promoting specific ideologies. The agency's objectives were clear. Corrupt young minds and sow seeds of division within the youth culture. It was a classic divide-and-conquer tactic, aiming to distract and fragment societal unity. The government spared no expense, investing significant resources in this grand experiment, fully aware of the potentially far-reaching ramifications. Homiston confessed that infiltrating mainstream radio stations was a critical part of the plan. By ensuring that the CIA back tunes received massive airplay, they could reach millions of impressionable ears daily. 
The music became a subtle vehicle for disseminating ideas, shaping attitudes, and even manipulating public sentiment on important issues. The success of the psychological operation, as Homiston described, was undeniable. The once niche hip hop culture exploded into the mainstream, captivating not only American audiences, but also captivating fans worldwide. The global appeal of hip hop became a powerful channel for the CIA to exert influence on a global scale, making it challenging for any dissenting voices to contest its dominance. While many questions remain unanswered, one thing is certain. Hip hop's impact on modern culture and society cannot be understated. Whether it was entirely a product of the CIA's clandestine machinations, or a fortuitous combination of creativity and circumstance, the genre's legacy is now etched into history. What do you think? Back in the 1960s, a dam construction project posed a significant threat to the Abu Simbel Temple prompting authorities to make a tough call, dismantle and relocate it to safety. This was no ordinary task, and it required the combined expertise of 14 countries, along with state-of-the-art forklifts and cutting-edge mechanisms. They had to move a staggering 1036 stone blocks, each weighing between 5 to 20 tons, covering a distance of just 200 meters. The entire process stretched on for a grueling five years. But the historians tell us that some peasants for the same five years had to saw 400,000 stone blocks with weight about 2.5 tons and move for tens of kilometers to collect in the pyramid. And no forklifts, all with pens and copper tools. When you hear such statements, you become convinced that most of such specialists have no idea even how to hold a shovel in their hands, not to mention the complexity of non-mechanized extraction processing and transportation of stone with primitive tools made of soft metals. Now, it's time for me to hear from you. What are your thoughts on this video? If you found it interesting or informative, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing it with your friends and family. Remember, the more people know about these important topics, the better. Before we wrap up, I want to extend a huge thank you to all the individuals who dedicated their time and energy to research and gather the information presented in this video. Their efforts are truly commendable and have helped shed light on important topics that affect us all. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications to be notified when the next video is uploaded. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.